In this video, I'm going to be having a look at the Synology DS718 Plus NAS Network Attached Storage. I'll unbox it, set it up, and I'll give you a walk around of the interface. Make sure you stick around if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button below and keep an eye out for more videos. Hi, I'm Will from Will Surridge Tech, and today we're going to be having a look at this. This is the Synology Disk Station DS718 Plus. I'll do an unboxing, a setup, give you my initial thoughts, and then we're going to integrate it into Home Assistant. So let's get going. Now, there are loads of videos out there of people who use this NAS. There are loads of videos out there of people who use this NAS and run Home Assistant on it, like a little server. But I'm going to use it as a NAS on its own and then integrate it into Home Assistant so I can keep an eye on the status of it and then I can you know, run automations to notify me if things are going wrong or whatever. Um, and then I'm going to release another video that shows off the Synology surveillance station, which is kind of the main reason I got this. I say I got this. This NAS was given to me for free by Synology, uh, but obviously all my reviews, all my thoughts, all of everything are my own. So I've got a nice, nice box, a nice carry handle. Very simple, very cardboard. Oh, got to open it sideways. Didn't realize that. Open it up, bit of foam. We've got power cable. We've got an ethernet cable, another ethernet cable. The power adapter brick thing. Some diddly little screws a key and an installation guide. And then of course, we have the NAS itself. So this is what we've got. Very nice, very pretty, very solid. The two bay disc, two disc, two drive NAS. Um, on the back, we have a big fan. We have two ethernet ports, a power port, two USB ports and an eSATA port. So you can add expansion. Um, to the drive or to the NAS. On the front, status, uh, a couple of LAN things, a C button, a power button, and another USB port. And then we've got our two hard drive bays. Very nice. Right, so I've got two four terabyte drives, they're not the drives, obviously, um, here, which I'm going to be adding. Crikey, these are quite something, aren't they? Good packaging. Uh, I've got the Seagate Ironwolf. Mostly because they were the people. I'm going to have them in a RAID configuration, obviously, for backup. Right, so very simple for drive installation. Didn't even need a screwdriver. Just got to pull these out somehow. There we go. Give it a little convincing. And then the drive just slides, slots in. Maybe it's better if it slots in. Just like that. And then we just push you back on. That is very satisfying. Never had a NAS before. Quite excited for it, to be honest. So, that in theory, Slots into there, like that. That slots into there, like that. And then if we want to, we can lock them in, he says, with this very oddly shaped key, which now means they don't come out. But we both know if I do that, we both, we all know, if I do that, I'm going to lose these very small plastic keys. Well, so far so good. I'm very happy with the build quality, all metal case, reasonably weighty, very weighty even. Good number of ports, good accessories, in that it comes with power cable. Hmm. Um, so I suppose we better set it up and try it out and have a look at the system. So as for the features, it's a two bay NAS. Uh, that's expandable up to seven bays if you get the expansion unit. It's got two gigabytes of RAM, again, expandable up to six. And it's got a quad-core 1.5 gigahertz 
processor. It's got three USB ports, two gigabit LAN ports for failover or aggregation, and it has an eSATA port. And that's pretty much all there is to it. It is a NAS. So let's have a look at it and get it set up. Right, so the disk station is plugged in and all ready to go. And to find it, we go to disk station, port 5000. And here we are, we are in the web assistant. How exciting. Set up, install the latest DSM. There is no data on it and wait 10 minutes. Okay, so that kind of did take about 10 minutes. It actually didn't take that long to do the update, but then it had to restart and restarting this thing takes a while. Anyhow, server name, let's call it NAS. Very nice. Go on. Synology account, quick connect, makes it easy to access without port forwarding. Okay, let's skip this step for now. We'll come back to it later. Share my network location to allow me to locate it via find.synology.com. Not sure we need that. You never know. Smart update, yes please. Database analytics, yeah, whatever. Oh, oh, oh. Well, that's good, isn't it? We're in. Let's do a walk around, shall we? Close all this. Go away, go away. Right, so we have all our applications. Shortcuts on the desktop, makes sense. Control panel. Shared folder. File services. Users. User groups. Other than users and groups and stuff in the settings, you've got all sorts of network stuff that you can do. Um, obviously, you can use your NAS as a, as a server on your network and you can do all sorts of cool, fancy networky things with it. I don't do networks really beyond the very basic, so I won't look into that now. Don't we? To manage our storage. That's the first thing we should probably be doing. No volume, no storage pool. There are two hard drives. 3.6 terabytes, where'd the rest of it go? Okay, I'm not really sure what a storage pool is. We want it to be RAID 1. We want those two to be in it. Lovely. Before using space, you must create a volume. Quite convoluted. I feel like this could have been part of the setup journey. I have to admit, create a volume. Custom. Existing storage pool one. Up. Oh. Description. Files, I suppose. Interesting. So we've gone from eight terabytes of hard drive, which isn't cheap, down to three and a half terabytes of storage space. Scary, isn't it? Package center. 
what can we get from our package censorship? Let's have a look in here. So backups for various things, don't really care about that. Not planning on having any audio or anything on there. I've got my DNS server on Pi Hole. There we go, surveillance session is installed. What else have we got? Chat servers, mail servers, office things, virtual machines, VPN servers. That's tempting, isn't it? Maybe I'll get a VPN. And we can install Docker and GitLab and Minim, whatever that is. Plex, Python, TeamViewer, all of the things are possible to install on this. Well, really, that is that. All is, all is grand. And possibly, if we head over to our computer, under network, we have the nurse. Connect as. And we're in. And there we go, we have a NAS. Right, so I figured out why the surveillance situation is there. Um, basically, you need to go into your control panel and shared folder and create shared folders. The surveillance shared folder was automatically created by, from when I installed the surveillance station package thing. Um, so if we want to create a new shared folder, we can call it files. Uh, enable recycle and that's useful so things don't just disappear and in the same thing and that is that don't worry about encrypting don't really care about any of that apply and then we can select which users have access to it uh, so obviously I want access and that is that so now we have our surveillance files and our files files and if we go into here, we can see that under NAS, we have files with a hashtag recycle. So we can create as many of these as we want, and they'll all pop up as separate units, drives, things in the NAS. Um, so that's great. What I also want to do is add a new user, and that is because we're going to integrate into Home Assistant. So I'm going to call it HassIO. Give it a nice password and leave it at that. It's just a user group um, and I don't want him to have access to any of the files. He just needs access to the thing. Um, permissions to DSM, yes. I think that's all I'm going to need. Hopefully. We'll find out. Okay, so the user does not need access to any applications or files, but it does need to be an administrator. Good to know, eh? Um, and that's just so it can access. So we've got the HassIO user, and then we can go over here, and sometimes it might be automatically discovered. In this case, it's not. Um, and we search for Synology DSM. I've forgotten what IP it's on. Currently, 228. It should just work, in theory. And well, now we play the waiting game. There we go. We're in. So we have got four different devices. We've got the NAS itself, we've got the two hard drives within the NAS, and the single volume made up of those two hard drives. And we've got quite a lot of entities. So in our NAS itself, we've got CPU load, memory load, network speeds, upload and download, security status, and temperature, and whether there is an update available. In each drive, we've got safety checks for life expectancy and bad sectors, drive status and the temperature. And then for the volume, we've got the temperature for the average disk in the volume, the status, not sure what that's going to be, and the space used in said volume. And that also has a percentage. So we've got a nice selection of sensors here, which we can now add to a dashboard 
to keep an eye on our Synology. Very simple. My initial thoughts on the device is, is it's fantastic. You know, it, it works. It, I mean, it does what it says on the tin, um, but it seems very well made. Um, it's got some great security features in there. You know, you can scan for hard drive failures and you can also scan for malware. It's, you know, it, it, as a file storage system, it is fantastic. So the thing that really sets this NAS apart, or Synology NAS is apart from all the other ones, is the Disk Station Manager, or the DSM. That is the interface that kind of is the OS that the NAS runs on. And it just makes it so simple and so easy to do anything, really. You know, the fact that you've got all sorts of settings in there, you've got file control, you've got a USB copy feature, so you could, if you could plug in a USB drive, you can copy things directly from that, just by the press of the button if you wanted to, or vice versa. Um, and it's great. So there we go, a setup and walkthrough of the DS718 Plus NAS. Make sure you click that subscribe button below and hit the bell icon to find out more about my smart tech and how you can build yourself the ultimate smart home.